Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. In today's lecture, we'll discuss the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Um, let's start with a short discussion of the mathematical basis behind the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And this basically builds on the previous lecture where we talked about wave packets, um, waves, wave packets, and the classical uncertainty relations that uh, result when you add uh, harmonic waves together. Um, so we, in, in the previous lecture we saw that you can add harmonic waves um, together to yield various different waveforms. We, we really just considered two harmonic waves that, sh that uh, yielded a uh, waveform that was consisted of a sinusoidal function that was modulated uh, with an envelope um, producing beats, um, but we can consider more, uh, we can add more waves together of various different amplitudes and we can get uh, different um, different total wave functions. So we can, this is probably most easily visualized I think in the um, sort of, uh, by investigating the spectral content or, exa or examining the spectral content of any particular wave, okay, and you do this formally mathematically by doing a what's called a Fourier transform which basically allows you to relate the particular dependence of uh, spatial and temporal dependence of the wave um, in, in some sort of real space like here uh, I'm plotting this is a sinusoidal waveform um, and so it's a function of x so we have y equals f of x and this is a single wave, a single harmonic wave, and so it has a particular wavelength equal to 2 pi over k, okay? Lambda 1 is equal to 2 pi over k1, okay? And in Fourier space or in the spectral content uh, or in k space, okay, <laughs> uh, wave, wave number space, uh, you can say that you have just the single component of um, uh, single component wave meaning that it has one particular wavelength. You have a single wave with one particular wavelength and so basically the amplitude in k-space or in wave number space is one and uh, and it's uh, at a wave number of k1. Okay. Now if we imagine that we now add three different waves together with different amplitudes. Okay. So let's imagine that we have uh, we still have uh, the, the uh, wave vector k1, okay, so this is a wave with a wavelength lambda 1 is equal to 2 pi over k1, okay, and we and we imagine that we have a unit amplitude, okay, an amplitude of 1, and then we add to that a wave with a different wavelength, okay, which is half the previous wavelength, so the wave number, which is 2 pi over lambda, is twice um, k1, so now we have uh, this waveform, and let's imagine that we have, that it has an amplitude of two-thirds compared to, um, to compared to the wave with wavelength lambda 1. And finally we have a third wave at three times the wave vector, th three times the wave number, 3k1, that means it's um, one-third the wavelength, and now we have an amplitude of a quarter. Okay, so if we added those three waves together with this phase relationship, then we'd get this waveform, okay, and um, and at the same time, in if we looked, if we decompose this waveform into its various separate waves, and then we would get this sort of plot in k space where we had k1 with an amplitude uh, of 1, uh, 2k2 with an amplitude of 2 thirds, and 3k1 with an amplitude of a fourth. And if we do the same thing down here, but now we have different amplitudes, so you can compare uh, this um, graph to this graph, and you can see they're the same wavelength, the same frequencies, but different ratios of amplitudes, and you get this different waveform over here. Okay, So in general, the point is that you can take any, any arbitrary waveform, break it down into a sum of sinusoidal waves, of harmonic waves, and that can actually be, rep be represented by the amplitude of each of the waves in, in k-space, or wave number space.